Hi everyone, this is Shirley from Shirley's World back again with a, another what sold, not a what sold, scratch that. Hi, this is Shirley from Shirley's World. I did a uh, video yesterday uh, about Bumblebee's box that I opened and today I wanted to show you some things I got on Monday from a Goodwill I go to only about every six, seven weeks in Strongsville after I get my hair cut. So um, I have a few things here. The reason I go to this store, uh, their prices are higher than our prices here in Medina County. But they have two days, Sundays and Mondays, where they have things marked, certain tag colors are marked a dollar. So I always go, Sunday would be the best day to go, but I never get there till Monday. Um, so I got quite a few things for a dollar, and but I did buy some things for uh, regular price, and they had another tag that was marked uh, half price. But their things are marked up, say example, their jeans. They put their jeans up at $10. So when they're half price, they're $5. That's about what ours is normally. And then I always get, I have to have a coupon for them. So uh, their half price sales aren't really terrific, but the dollar days are the best days that I go. So I, I went there um, before I got my hair cut. It wasn't enough time. So I went back after I got my hair cut. So I have two um, receipts here. But uh, added up, totally, I spent $35.64, and I got 17 items. And um, because I got a few things at full price and a couple things at half price instead of a dollar, the average price of my items that I got totally was $2.09, so still pretty good. Uh, if they didn't have this dollar day, I it would be way uh, more than that. But I try to go there only on the days I have things for a dollar. So let me show you what I got. Um, I think I only got a couple pairs of jeans. Yellow tags were were a dollar. So this had been marked eight dollars, this pair of jeans. It's a size 10 and it's a not your daughter's jeans. And uh, there's the tag. And they're a nice dark, sort of darker wash jean. And uh, so I picked those up for a dollar. <clears throat> and the other pair of blue jeans I got were also a dollar. They were men's and they also are marked eight uh, dollars. These are size 44 it says inside. Uh, the tag says 40 so I don't know what size they are. But these are just, oh, these aren't jeans. These are, well, they're jean shorts. These are shorts, like Bermuda length uh, shorts uh, with pockets on the side, almost like carpenter uh, work jeans. And they are by Wrangler. Uh, there's the tag down there on the pocket. Uh, just a pair of men's larger size. 40 or 42. I'll have to measure and just put the measurement on because inside it says 44. But I'm not sure if they're that quite that big or not. Um, so a pair of men's large shorts. <laughs> uh, this was also a dollar. These are size 32 men's and these are by Billabong, which is actually... They do more surfing shorts, uh, board shorts, that type of thing. Uh, they are a good brand to buy for board shorts. But these are just a pair of regular uh, 
khaki type jeans, cotton jeans, and they were a dollar and they were size 32, which is a common size. So I picked those up. <clears throat> they have flap pockets in the back. Sometimes when things are a dollar at the store, even I'm trying to buy things that will sell for over $20 after sales and everything. Uh, but it's hard not to get some things when they're a dollar. Now I did pass by some shirts that I have an awful lot of uh, and didn't get, get them men's shirts, but I got a few. Uh, this is a pair of men's J. Crew Factory. They have the little dots under the J. Crew. Uh, if you can see there, the little dots. That means J. Crew Factory. But they were a dollar for J. Crew. They had been marked seven dollars. They are thirty-four by thirty-four. A uh, nice pair of chino uh, pants. <clears throat> so I'll pack those up. And Eddie Bauer. Usually I don't pick up Eddie Bauer. These are men's 34. But these are that nylon type outdoor pants. And the pockets are all zipper pockets. Well, not the front ones, but the back ones. There's two, two pockets back here, and they both are zippered pockets. And there's the Eddie Bauer tag. These are an olive green. And like I said, they are that uh, outdoorsy nylon type uh, fabric. So for a dollar, I picked them up. We'll see how they go. <clears throat> also, that uh, store is not giving out bags at all. And I had to run out to the car and get my bags because last time they were still giving out bags, but they've stopped altogether giving any bags. So... Got quite a few shorts and things. Let's see. This is uh, women's, I think. Yeah, these were a dollar. These are women's shorts in a size eight, and they are by Lauren. Lauren Ralph Lauren, size eight. Just a pair of uh, little khaki shorts. Just uh, casual shorts. They aren't Bermudas. Bermudas are supposed to be in style this year. And so I do, I have been looking for the longer shorts. <clears throat> now these are a little longer. These were a dollar and they are Tommy Hilfiger, I think. Yes, yeah, size eight, women's Tommy Hilfiger. Size eight. And they are... They're not denim, but they're denim color. They're cotton pants. Uh, just plain little shorts. Shorts, not pants. So a nice pair of Tommy Hilfiger's. And <clears throat> now this was not a half price. This was not a yellow tag. This was a purple tag, which was half price. So this was had been $7. So this was $3.50. It's uh, Tommy Hilfiger. And the reason I got this is it's a long and a tall and a size 18 and 36, 37 sleeve. So all really big sizes. And it's non-iron, sort of a, a nice, uh, 
I wouldn't call it a check. It's sort of textured type uh, print on there. It was just a long sleeve dress shirt. But it's with such a big size uh, that you don't see that often. So that's why I picked that up at half price. So that was $350. Now this, I saw the tags hanging. This was a good buy, I think. This is Talbot's. It's new with tags, even though the uh, price tag is torn off. Maybe I can screen that, uh, that little barcode and find out. But it's a medium, women's, all cotton, Talbot's, and it was a dollar. It had been marked $15, and it's a little uh, cardigan that buttons down the front, <coughs> long sleeve, and it's a really thick knit. <coughs> so I thought this was really cute. It snaps. It doesn't button. It snaps. These are snaps. So it has a collar. So this is uh, brand new. Did I say the size? Medium. Yeah, and it's like cotton. So I thought that was a good buy for, for a dollar, for sure. Now, let's see. Okay. This is a Susan Graver, which I have sort of stopped picking up, Susan Graver. Uh, but it was a dollar. It's, it's extra large. The reason I got this is because it's polka dots, and that's supposed to be one of the in things this year, are polka dots. So it's a uh, button down the front. It's an extra small, sort of a sheer... It's sheer blouse uh, with a collar. So I got that because of the polka dots. But they're one of the trending things this year. Uh, yellow tag. This was a dollar. Another Tommy Hilfiger. Extra large. Custom fit in this plaid. Oh, this is short sleeve. This is a short sleeve shirt. <clears throat> Some more for summer in this nice plaid. I didn't take anything out of the boxes, so nothing is buttoned and more wrinkled than if I would have hung it up, but uh, I think most of these fabrics they will just hang out if I hang them for a couple days. So I thought that was a pretty plaid. A short sleeve shirt. And then this was also a dollar. And this is small. Uh, short sleeve. And this is by Woolrich in a, like I said, a small. And it has a uh, embroidery all over it sort of flower embroidery it's a pretty little blouse now Woolrich is a good name but it does better with their wool things you know they're they're all wool things but you know this is i think cotton i don't know if i even looked at the tag it feels like cotton It has it here it is uh yes it's all cotton it does have a style number in there so i thought it was a really pretty little blouse <clears throat> it does have sort of the polka dot uh what do you call those swiss dots uh all over it, the raised uh ones I 
got two things exactly the same color, I see. They're not the same brand at all. I did find, now this was full price. This is a pink tag, but it was only marked $4.50. It's a medium, and it's an older tag of free people. It's a free people. And it's just a, a uh, pullover top, but the sleeves have a ruffle at the bottom, and they have this uh, crocheting or lace type of sleeve all down the side of the sleeve. So it's sort of different. Like free people is. And it's two different fabrics. It, the uh, body is like a knit, and the sleeves are like a gauze. And that's why they look a different color, because they actually appear that way. But this was uh, full price at $4.50. I got it because I don't find many free people things at all, ever. Okay, another... Uh, Yellow tag was a dollar, and this is a pair of size 32 men's polo by Ralph Lauren. A uh, pair of red, or sort of a washed out color of red pants. They look like straight leg. They have button pockets in the back. <coughs> And the uh, little pony is on the back. So, pick those up. There was also a pair, I've almost picked up a pair of Lucky Brand. Uh, I'm pretty sure they were either full price or uh, half price, but they were button fry. fry and fly and they were uh, really skinny like a 28 or something um, I don't know if I should have picked those up or not lucky brand isn't as good as it used to be but it's better in men's than it is in women's so I don't know maybe I should have picked that up <laughs> and another red thing here by chaps and this is extra large, and this is linen. And this was in the men's, but it's a women's. It's a sort of a, well, it's long sleeve. But it's those cuffs that you, no buttons, you sort of like turn them up like that, I think. But it's just a collared uh, extra large um, women's red uh, shirt in the linen. So I got that for a dollar. One, two, three, four red things. Now I did get, which I haven't been finding in my Goodwill, I did find a couple purses. Okay, this first one and they were full price, uh, but they weren't too bad. These were $6. Uh, this is a, uh, let's see if I can pronounce this right. Tigna, Tigna, Tignanello, Tignanello, is that how you pronounce it? I don't think I can get the tag to show. It's down in here. Can you see that? Tignanello. And it's just a really nice uh, crossbody shirt. And this little this little blank thing here is a magnet. It has a zipper pocket here on the front, and it has a pocket on the back. And it has a zipper pocket inside. So, crossbody, uh, little purse. Great for summer. 
because it's white or sort of off white. So I got that, six dollars. And my big find was, and this wasn't marked up, this was six dollars. And this is Rebecca Minkoff. I've never found anything by this brand. Rebecca Minkoff is uh, a very expensive purses. And uh, this is a uh, quilted. I found one exactly like it on eBay selling for $65 in brown. The exact same purse. So this is in really good shape. The only thing that I saw was where the little turn thing is here. There's a little mark like on the metal. I don't think you can even see it. See, it's sort of marked a little bit. Uh, from turning it back and forth. But it's really, really clean inside. Oh, you can't see that at all. But uh, it is, take it from me, it's super clean inside. Doesn't even look like it's been used except for that one thing on the uh, little clasp. And it has this pocket in the back sliding pocket and it's a cross body has a chain here and then a leather uh, and a little buckle here so that was uh, a good find I hope I have never found this brand before can't see it very good but, uh, this is Rebecca Minkoff can look it up and you see that those purses go pretty, uh, they're pretty expensive. So try it. But I'm glad I finally found a couple purses. So that is what I got. That is it. That's what I got at the Goodwill in Strongsville. So I don't think there's anybody here. But anybody that comes later on, because I wasn't sure if I was going to do this at 1 or 2 o'clock. But um, I think I should go to the barn today because tomorrow at 6 or 7 o'clock tonight, there's a storm coming in. that's going to involve ice, snow and ice. So I have to get to the barn uh, pretty early this afternoon. Because tomorrow is supposed to be awful as far as weather goes. So I don't, I was planning on going tomorrow, but no, I don't want to go tomorrow. But I did promise to talk about my chickens somewhat here. So uh, I wish there was someone here to ask me some questions. But I'll show you the, the eggs I got just from this morning. I got a... Uh, this looks green on here, but it's, it's pretty blue. Uh, light turquoise. I got another brown egg and another regu regular brown egg. Chocolate egg. So three so far today. As far as I can tell, there's uh, five hens have started to lay again. And I wanted to show you what hens that I have what breeds I have. <clears throat> I have some pictures of them that I took when I first uh, was ordering the chicks. Okay. Remember yesterday that huge egg? One of the eggs was really big. And this is the girl that lays the really big eggs. And she's a buff Orpington. And she's the gold one. And her name is Miss Marple, after the uh, Agatha Christie uh, character. Uh, they are usually heavy birds, seven to eight pounds. Uh, they lay regular brown eggs. Uh, they go broody very easily, which, yes, I've had them before, and they usually will end up being broody at some time or other, which means they just want to sit on the nest and have uh, have babies <laughs> but we have no rooster so it's false alarm uh, 
They're very sweet, docile, and calm. They are a very good breed to even start with if you're just going into chickens. And this is my barred rock. You see this chicken on a lot of paintings and things. This is called a barred Plymouth rock is the breed. And her name, mine, my barred rock is named Betty. And Betty is named after a chicken. I used to follow somebody on Periscope, a guy that lived, I think he lived in Texas, I'm not sure. But his most beloved chicken was named Betty, and she got attacked uh, by a fox, I think. And she recovered, sort of, but she never was quite right, and she finally died. And he was so upset. And I did name... Uh, my new chick when I got it uh, after that chicken. I know it's silly, but uh, anyway, these chickens that I have now, the eight chick chickens that I have now, they were hatched on April 9th, 2018. So in April, they will be two years old. Uh, they're just getting to be two years old now. So the ones that lay the, uh, the green and the blue eggs are called Americanas or Easter Eggers. I have one olive egger and one Easter egger. The Easter egger does the blue eggs. The olive egg egger does the olive colored green eggs. And mine is just like that one. They come in all different colors. But mine is the gray just like that gray one. Both of mine are gray. And their name, uh, one of them is Dixie, because it was Dixie Chick when she was little. Dixie and Daisy. Those are the two. And those are the bad girls that always fly out of the netting. <laughs> so they're the ones that I had to clip their wings uh, last summer. So I'll probably have to do it again this year because they've grown their flight feathers back now. Okay, then I have a, this is a beautiful chicken. This is called a lace, silver laced Wyandotte. Black and white, but it's, it's just beautifully marked. Uh, beautifully marked, uh, and her name is Lacey. It's not very, uh, sort of common name for a laced Wyandotte, but uh, her name is Lacey. And then I have two white chickens, and these are called Cochins, the breed. And you'll notice their feet. Their feet are all feathered. And uh, one of, one is, uh, one is Susie. And one is Sasha. So it's Susie and Sasha. And Susie seems to be sort of the uh, low in the pecking order. She's sort of the lowest in the pecking order. And she'll get picked on sometimes and afraid to go in with the flock really close. And other times it seems to be another one. So their little flock changes sometimes like a herd of horses. Sometimes they change if you mess with the herd at all. So uh, that's my flock of eight. Uh, my flock of eight chickens. Oh, I forgot Coco. I didn't have a picture, so I've opened up a magazine here. Coco, which is Coco Chanel, lays the, uh, she's, she's the black one. And she lays the chocolate eggs. She's all black. And her feathers are sort of iridescent in the sun. They sort of are greenish. Uh, they're black, but they're sort of a greenish iridescent. They're beautiful. So that is Coco. Coco Chanel. She's a black copper marin. And those are the most expensive of what I get. She was the most expensive chick to get. 
I mean, not hugely expensive. Most chicks are around when you buy chicks. They can be anywhere from $2 to $6 or something. I think she was like $18. <laughs> so uh, some of the really um, uncommon ones can be even more expensive, even for a chick. So anyway, those are my chickens uh, and the chickens' names. And I didn't... Uh, Oh, Bumblebee. Hi, you're here. <laughs> yeah, here I am. You love my egg at the Christie. Yeah. Yeah, Miss Marple. So I named my one of my chickens Miss Marple. Uh, they happily named as Dixie Chicks. Yeah. Uh, two watches. Do I have two? Let me show one here. Maybe your husband's watching. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if anybody, I was hoping some there'd be a lot of people on <clears throat> that were interested in chickens that they could ask me some questions. But I thought I'd just tell some interesting facts about chickens and save some of this other things uh, for later or from another, for another time. I have a whole folder full of chicken things. Uh, <clears throat> here's interesting facts about chickens. Chickens, I may have done this one time on the tea time, I'm not sure. But anyway, I'll do it now. Uh, I have that I scoped it on August 17th, but it doesn't say what year. <clears throat> that could have been on Periscope, though. Um, chickens have prehistoric roots. They are actually from the dinosaurs. They come all the way down from dinosaurs. And if you sort of look at chickens, you can sort of see a T-Rex in there somewhere. <laughs> they don't have the little arms, but if you look at them close, you can sort of uh, see. Oh, Poshmark. Posh Market, Posh Planet. Hi. I'm glad you made it. Yes, chickens are smart. I guarantee you they're smart. Yeah, we do eat them. And I'm, you know, when I got chickens, I don't eat red meat. And when I got chickens, I was, I only eat meat, I only eat chicken and fish. And I was sort of afraid that when I got chickens, like for pets, which mine are, <clears throat> that I wouldn't be able to eat chicken anymore. But I do buy chicken in the grocery store. It doesn't look like chick chickens. And I do eat chicken for protein, and I do eat fish. But uh, I don't eat any red meat. I don't eat pork. So, yeah, I do. But the chickens that are kept for meat, let me tell you something sad about them. The ones that they use for meat, they are bred to be full grown, big and fat at like <clears throat> just a few months old. If you let, if you try to keep them as pets, <clears throat> those ones that are bred for meat, if you keep try to keep them as pets, they get so big because that's how they're bred that they can't even walk. That's how the humans have uh, messed with those. So there are some chickens that are good for both laying and uh, using as meat chickens, but of course mine, of course can't. They have names. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. Chickens make very good teachers. They teach, uh, a mother hen will teach her baby chicks from when they are hatched uh, how to do everything. You don't have to mess with baby chicks at all if you let it naturally, uh, if they naturally hatch the eggs and uh, have their own little 
little brood of of chickens, they will teach them everything. They teach them how to uh, drink. They teach them how to go out and hunt for food. Even when they're tiny little, they teach them everything. They teach them all the calls and all the the noises. All this noise, these soft little noises that chickens make. They all are. They all have a meaning. They all talk to each other. And I think it may be on here. Yes, there's 30 distinct vocalizations that they use to communicate with each other. 30 different things that they're saying. They have a warning cry, of course, for predators. And <clears throat> they have a different warning call if the predator is up in the air like a hawk. That's different from like a fox. And then they talk to each other about all different things. I'd like to know what they're saying, but I don't exactly understand their chicken talk. Um, chickens model their behavior on other chickens that they can learn. Sometimes a broody chicken, uh, if one goes broody, another one will go broody. Just because she sees that one in the nesting box all the time. And then you have two to contend with. Because when a chicken goes broody, they just, there's certain breeds that go broody more often. I have two types that go broody a lot. The white ones and this, the Miss Marple is that Buff Orpingtons. They go broody a lot. So they just, it's something in the hormones and they just want to raise baby chickens. They just want to have babies. It's sort of sad. But. I have no rooster, the eggs aren't fertile, and they will collect eggs under them. And if you go in the nesting box and try to move them and trying to get the eggs out from under them, they'll peck you. Uh, some of them are really mean. Some of them aren't. They'll let you take the eggs or they let me pick them up and take them out to the yard. You have to keep taking them off the nest and putting them out with the flock and keeping them out of the nesting box. <clears throat> Sometimes if you can't break the broodiness that way, I've had a couple that I actually had to put in, they're in with the flock, but they're in a wire cage. And they there's no nesting material in there. The bottom is wire also. They have food and water in there, but they can't make a nest. So you keep them in there for two or three days, and usually that will do it. Uh, that will break them because the whole time they are broody and they're sitting on the nest, they don't eat. They hardly drink. Sometimes they'll come out and drink some, but, and they peck the feathers off their chest to make the nest. They can make themselves completely bald on their chest. If you leave them in there too long and they make this really soft nest for their babies that they think they're going to have. I've always wanted to just, I, I won't get a rooster, but you can buy fertile eggs from the same place I get my chickens, my chicks. You can buy fertile eggs, they come in the mail, <clears throat> and you can either put them in a regular brooding uh, box thing, you know, or you can stick them under a broody hen. If you have a broody hen, you can sneak eggs, and it's best to do this at night. You sneak eggs under them, and they won't know the difference. They will think that those are their eggs, and you just leave them sitting on those eggs. And they will hatch those eggs, and they will just adopt. It doesn't even matter what breed they are. They will adopt those chicks as their own and they will teach them everything. Now there's only one problem with doing that. When you get those fertile eggs, there's no way of telling if they are going to be uh, roosters or hens. So you're taking the chance of getting a rooster. You could get, you could order four or five fertile eggs you could have all roosters, and then what would you do? You'd have to give them away 
uh, find a place that somebody wants roosters, and that's not easy to do. And a lot of times if you give away roosters, they'll just use them for meat. So it's not something I want to uh, have that problem doing. <sighs> yeah, that's for sure about the if yes and if more people knew about those poor meat chickens and then most of them still are kept in these factory farm type situations where their life is just horrible i mean it's just horrendous so if you get the uh the ones that are uh free to roam or whatever they call them uh and they're not kept in the uh, inside, and they're organic. They're kept uh, organic because my chickens are fed only organic feed, and then they eat whatever they find in the yard. Uh, I don't have any fertilizer or anything on my, my yards anymore. Of course, my grass and everything else is a mess because there's no fertilizer and no weed killer, nothing like that is used anymore. So... Yeah, my yard isn't pretty anymore, but at least it won't poison my chickens. <clears throat> so, uh, chickens begin to communicate before they are even hatched. When they just are they when they're just like a week from hatching, they'll make little sounds inside the egg. And uh, if you're using one of those uh, heated hatching things they say that they can hear them i've never heard them but because i've never had any but uh the mother hen can hear and she will talk back to the eggs and they communicate so that when those little chicks hatch they already of course know their mother and i think that's so interesting that they can actually communicate through the shell and communicate with their mama. So, um, <clears throat> let's see, chickens are more docile at night. Yes, if you want to do anything with your chickens, move them to another place or whatever, uh, it's best to do it at night. They go in, once they go to sort of to sleep, uh, they almost become in like in a trance. They'll move around, and if you go into the coop, they'll sort of maybe look at you or whatever, but they are not really with it. And you can pick them up and move them. And if you want to introduce a new chicken into the flock, that's when to do it. You do it at night, and a lot of times this works. You do it at night, and you put the new chicken in there, and uh, when they all wake up together in the morning, most of the time, it's uh, everything is okay. Not all the time, but sometimes. Uh, here's a very interesting fact. Chickens can recognize a hundred human faces. Now, that's kind of hard to believe. And I don't know if it's human faces, just faces. Okay, a hundred faces. Now this includes dogs, cats, and humans. My chickens, of course, know me. They know me the minute they see me. They can see me from the house. If I go by the window of the house, they'll all run in the yard over to the fence and they're waiting for me to come out. If somebody else comes and goes up to the chickens, they will run because they don't know them. If Even if they're with me, they will be real hesitant. And uh, they got to know my grandchildren when they were small, when they came a lot. They got to know their, them. And uh, but, but my daughter-in-law couldn't go up and... and uh, Go close to them and my son either because they don't really have much to do with the chickens uh, 
Yeah, I think that was amazing that they can they can recognize faces. They are smart. You've seen chickens on these programs playing the piano. You can teach them to do things. I got a little xylophone, but I couldn't get it to work right. They would peck it, but it wouldn't make the sound right because I was going to teach them how to play it by putting, you put little pieces of corn on and they peck it to make the sound and that's how you start teaching them, I guess. I don't know. I was never successful in that because my little xylophone didn't work. I don't have a little play piano. Uh, chickens lay different colored eggs, as you see, depending on the breed. Yes, the breed is what determines the, the color of the egg. It's not what they eat, even though what they eat can make the shade of the egg either more blue or less blue or more brown or less brown, but it's still the same color. So that depends on the breed of the chicken as to what color of eggs. All eggs are the same inside. It doesn't matter what color they are on the outside. They're all exactly the same inside. Uh, there are pink eggs too. I've never had a pink layer. Uh, it all depends on pigment that they, they put out in the in the process when the egg is being made and comes down through the uh, chicken and is laid. Uh, Yes, chicken eggs are nutritionally the same, no matter what the color. Uh, chickens signal when they're ready to lay, and this is uh, when they are first laying after their their pullets, uh, when they're when they're baby chickens, but they're sort of grown, but they haven't laid yet. They're called pullets, and before they lay, you're waiting and waiting and waiting on that first egg, and they will. There's little signals. Uh, their comb will get redder, will get a more brilliant red. And if you go to touch them, they will squat down and sort of almost lay on the ground. And that's a sure sign that they will be laying eggs in the next uh, few days. Those two signs are ones that I've seen uh, with all my hens. Uh, yeah, they squat down submissively when you reach to pet them. So those are the little facts that I have about uh, chickens. Uh, I will say about the chicken eggs. I don't know if everybody knows this or not. Uh, yes, if baby chicks can communicate with their mom in the shell, what do they say? about unborn babies and the existence of God? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't have the answer to that. <laughs> uh, how do they know that? I watch, let's see, let me go back here. You just try to eat minimum required. Yeah, I meant if people want to wanted meat, it would really be humane to eat something hunted as long as it's done right. All right. I watch this homesteading channel, treat their animals like pets, and they just have one, one bad day in their life. Is that when they... That's maybe when they butcher their chickens. I don't know what that... I do watch a homesteading channel too, but I never watch. I watched a homesteading channel for a long time. As soon as they had that on there about the chickens, I just stopped watching them altogether. Because then after that, they got they got sheep, they had lambs, they had, no, I can't do that. <laughs> but I wanted to tell you about the chickens, eggs and why they're clean when they come out because, I don't know if you know this or not, but I uh, hope this isn't too gross, it won't be anything. Chickens have one vent. They go to the bathroom through the same vent as they lay eggs. Now, 
you have one, think of it this way, you have one throat, okay? Down here someplace, it divides into your trachea and your esophagus. Now, when you swallow water, if that didn't, if the trachea didn't close off, you drowned. It would go into your lungs, okay? Keep that in mind. So when an egg comes down through the whole, uh, I don't have a picture of the whole inside of a chicken here, but it comes down, it makes the shell, it makes the color, does all the stuff it does to make an egg, and it comes to where the vent is, it, the vent closes off part of the vent, and there's a part inside where the eggs go, and there's a part where the chicken goes to the bathroom. So it divides off just like sort of your trachea and your esophagus. That's my best way of describing it. But that is why, um, that's why eggs, unless they happen to lay an egg in a dirty nesting box, Legs are, eggs are always beautifully nice and clean. And there's one way to keep them that way, and that's not to let your chickens sleep in the nesting box. I have not been successful with Susie. Susie sleeps, and I think, ah, I think that's because she gets picked on. And when she tries to go up on the roosting bar at night, they knock her off. So she started sleeping in one of the nesting boxes, and I've just let her sleep in there. She sleeps in there every single night. In the morning, I clean it out because they go to the bathroom at night a lot. So I clean out the nesting box, and that's just how it is with Susie. <laughs> but uh, it's a little fact about eggs. Another fact about eggs, if you buy eggs in the store, okay, the chicken farmers don't even have to get to get the eggs to the stores for 30 days, okay, 30 days. Okay, the stores can keep the eggs uh, for another 60 days, I think, in the store. Maybe it's 30 days. So, okay, that's two months. Now... They will keep in your refrigerator because they have been washed. So the bloom is not on those eggs anymore. So they have to be refrigerated. So they've been washed when they're in the store. And you put them in your refrigerator and they will keep in your refrigerator, it says, for five weeks. So just think, you could have an egg that was hatched, or not hatched, that was laid in close to Easter, and you could be eating it in at Christmas time. So think about that. My eggs are super fresh. I mean, I take, when my chickens, now they're starting to lay now a lot. I can't eat all these eggs. So, um, yeah, she feels safe in the nesting box, that's for sure. She needs a big brother. Uh, uh, the uh, I have so many eggs in the summer. I mean, if you think of the chickens laying, I have eight hens. I get seven or eight eggs a day. Every day. That adds up to a huge amount of eggs. So luckily I have uh, a lady at the barn. My friend at the barn, she takes as many eggs as I'll give her. She's a big time cook. And another one of my girlfriends will take three and four dozen at a time when she comes over. So I have people to give them to because uh, another thing you can do with your eggs is you can just put six or eight of them, scramble them up and feed them back to your chickens. They love eggs. And it's a really good source of protein for them. And another part of the egg that never goes to waste is the shell. I put all the shells into a bucket underneath my sink. And when they all, when the bucket fills up and they're all dried out, uh, you can put them in the oven for like 10 minutes and, and make them really fragile. 
so they crack they crush up easily but you don't have to do that you can uh, just crush them up I put them in a plastic bag and roll them with a rolling pin crush them up to tiny little pieces and that that is pure calcium so in, instead of having to buy calcium to give to your chickens and most of that calcium you buy is oyster shell calcium and uh, you should give them that during the, when they're laying a lot uh, some feed has it in now but still I would give them the oyster shell but now I give them every time I have a lot of eggs and crush them up I just put them in a container out there and they take what they need for um, for calcium and they eat it back so Every part of the egg is useful. Like I said, it's one of God's perfect foods. Nature's perfect food along with honey. So that is about what I have to say about chickens. Uh, the composting shells is great too, yes. Yeah. To sell eggs, because I thought... I could set up a little stand. I even have a sign. I could set up a little sign out front about selling eggs, but there's some rules you have to follow. The eggs that you sell, they have to be washed. They have to be put in a carton that doesn't have another name on it, of course. Uh, I just reuse cartons that people give me. Uh, I did buy some plain cartons, and I bought a little card. I'll have to show that sometime. A little card. It's red and white check. Looks real country. And it says Shirley's Hens on it. And you can sell your eggs. And unless you sell a huge amount, you don't have to really do too many of the rules. But you do have to wash them, and they do have to be in uh, cartons. They have to be refrigerated, too. So there's some rules you have to... Uh, follow if you're going to sell eggs. So I just give my eggs away. So they're getting organic eggs, which are expensive to buy. Usually $4 and something in the store to buy good organic eggs. So yeah, I just am looking for people to uh, that want to take my eggs in the summertime. I don't know if you can sell eggs on eBay. I wouldn't try. <laughs> uh Yeah, for sure. But there's always use for the eggs, like I said. If you don't eat them, if your friends don't eat them, you feed them back to the chickens. Or the dog. It's good for the dog's coats, too. So, yeah, my chickens are very, very healthy, so you don't have to worry about anything from the chickens. And <clears throat> so... If I ever get to a thousand subscribers and I can take live videos with another camera through the YouTube app, I will uh, be able to show a lot more things. That's really why I want a thousand subscribers. Uh, also, I just wanted to say one more thing about, if I have it here. I think I can remember. Where did I put it? I put little notes. I put notes around and they just get buried on my messy desk. Anyway, there is an app out that if you go on, um, here it is. If you go on uh, Rockstar Flipper, if you watch Rockstar, he told a couple days ago, he told about this app that to use. It's only on, uh, unfortunately for right now, it's only on iOS uh, Apple devices. Uh, you can do it on iPads, the app on iPads or iPhones. And it's called Photo Room. It's an app, Photo Room. It's free. And it will completely 
you take a picture of an item and it will completely take everything off the background and make your background completely white, which is what eBay wants. It's not that important. On Poshmark, good pictures are important, but it makes it completely white. Even if you'd have other things in, uh, you just put what you want the picture of. You know, you just touch the picture of what you want. And uh, he showed he did a hat on there. Just, if you go on and watch his video, it's it's really good. So I immediately uh, uh, got the app on my phone and tried it immediately, and it works perfectly. So if you have an iPhone or an iOS device, try it. It's free. It's called Photo Room, and uh, it will make your backgrounds completely white. Uh, on whatever your device you're taking the picture. Now, I can't do it from my big desktop. I'd have to do it at, I would take the picture with my phone, like I do, and then before I would I would uh, use the app right then when I take all the pictures. I'd pick what pictures I want, and it does go to your uh, photos. So it will be on my, my photos, on my big desktop when I go to list because I already tested that. So a really uh, handy app now for pure white backgrounds. So I did want to say that. Uh, Rockstar Flipper, a couple days ago he had it on and he shows you how to use it. So he does does a much better job than me. Ignore C15. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Clothing working around the worn. My mother-in-law would tell how in Italy they would remake worn clothing into children's. Yeah. My mother did the same thing. We weren't wealthy by any means when we were little. My mother sewed all our clothes. We had, she was a great uh, seamstress, and she made all our clothes, or most of them. Uh, so we, we had a lot of hand-me-downs, yeah. Yeah, it's a great app. So I am going to close now because I have got to get out to the barn before any weather happens. I don't want to get stuck in an ice storm for sure. So I will uh, be on, what day is this Wednesday? For sure on Sunday, if not before, about something. This is talking about chickens. Uh, this was the very first book I got. And I still go on her website. She has a wonderful website. Her name is Lisa Steele. And the website is called Fresh Eggs Daily. And she has produced three or four books other than this one now. This was her first book. I learned so much stuff from this book. And then, of course, I have six or seven other books because before I even got my first flock of chicks, I read about keeping chickens or getting chicks for almost a year. I was so afraid I'd kill my chicks. But I knew a lot about chicks before I ever got them. You don't have to do that much, but uh, that's just me. So, yeah. I'm glad you found it interesting. Good. Anybody that comes on afterwards, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. doesn't matter. I'd like the thumbs up, though. And I will be back. Uh, later in the week. I'm going to see my horses now. Uh, see you Sunday for sure. Bye.